What's up guys, got another video review for you. Uh, first of all, before I even get into the review and talk about anything, you might notice that my hands look funny. That's because I'm using a different setup. Uh, this guy is a Voyager side figure. So for example, this guy, Night Morpher, um, Thundercracker. You can see him all in frame now, kind of, but because I don't have it zoomed properly, but if I were to zoom out, I'd be able to see him fully now. I'm using a different tripod just for these larger figures. Um, it's more of a pain in the butt for me. As you can see, I have to kind of reach my hands around. I'm sitting to the side of the camera, so directly behind it. But we're going to try it out, see how it goes. If we don't like it, we won't use it anymore, but we're going to just take a look at this one for now. So this is from TFC, TFC Toys, who brought us Hercules. Um, they've done it again. They're going now. They're doing Superion. They're not Superion. Um, called Uranus. Yeah, it used to be called Ura, Uranus, like the planet. You know, Uranus. Uh, yeah. But they changed the name to Uranus with an O. So this is the first guy to come out in the new combiner. Uh, you know, the new combiner set. He is uh, just named Phantom. They're calling all the all their figures just by what kind of plane they are. Um, this guy was a phantom, so he's just phantom. I really wish they would have given them, you know, a normal name, but whatever, what are you gonna do? Once once they're, you know, combined, you're not gonna even look at them separately anyway. But this guy is an homage to Fireflight, who was a G1 uh, aerial bot, and he was a phantom. So I'm pretty sure all these markings you'll see on the sides are just from the G1 toy. I do have a G1 Superion, but he's in storage, so I'm not going to go bust my butt trying to find him. Some really cool paint there. Um, the other thing you'll notice, which you probably might not notice, is there are four screws here. One, two, three, four. And they give you the, in the little baggie that comes with this guy, he, they give you, that's the problem with this setup here. Let me zoom in a little bit better. You'll see right here, right here, and two on the other side, they give you these little covers that if you want to, you can plug up the screw holes with. And it just makes it a little bit cleaner. Uh, I went ahead and did that after I did something else, which we'll talk about in a minute. I know you're like, what the hell are you talking about? But you'll see. So, like I said, he is a Phantom Jet. Uh, that's why the wing tips are curled up. These tips are actually on hinges. You can maneuver them and position them any way you want. Um, he's very nicely painted. We got all these nice paint de uh, They look like decals, but they're painted on. Um, the thrusters I thought were really cool. Let me get a kind of a tight shot in there. You can see that the thrusters actually have some like jet, you know, burned, blackened in sections. <clears throat> just on the rear of the thrusters, and you can see up in that wheel well, not the wheel well, but the the curved section where the thrusters are, you can see it's it's all sooty, so you can tell it's been, you know, he's been around for a while, which I think, I think that's like the coolest little touch. Um, it is kind of kibbly on the bottom, but let's not look at the bottom. He does have landing gear, two in the wheel, two on the wings, one on the nose, they do roll. Uh, but the only problem is these missile pods or fuel pods or whatever they are get in the way. They're actually, if you, you can't really see from this angle, but see the wheel doesn't touch because these are a little bit too, the posts on here are a little bit too thick. You could actually just take a knife and shave off a little bit, but I haven't done that yet. But when you put them in, it's just, they just makes it not sit flush, but if you pop them off, he actually rolls just fine. So there's that. So what we're gonna, so let's, so like I said, he is part of a combiner now. So we're doing Hercules all over again, but this time you're gonna do it with me. Um, so he does combine, he does form the arm of Superion, or Uranus. Uh, so we will show that off in a, few, in a minute. 
I haven't decided if I want to go from vehicle to robot to arm or vehicle to arm to robot. Huh. I'm gonna do vehicle to robot to arm. Settled. Done. Okay. So to transform this guy, the first thing you want to do is come up underneath and push in the wheels. You can see there's little indents for the wheels in the wings so they sit flush. And the front's got a little divot here. You just fold that down. Um, so the first thing you want to do is come under the wing. And right at the wing tip, it pegs up into the arm. And it's actually very secure. So as you can see right there, you see that tab right there? And there's a hole right there. And they peg together. And the wing pops off. <laughs> That's fine. The wing is supposed to be able to pop off. It's just on a peg. You can, and when you transform it, you just push it back up in that hole. So for right now, I'm just going to pop the wings off because it makes the transformation easier. So we're going to do the same on the other side. Let me zoom out. I'm just going to pop the wings off completely for now. Next thing we're going to do is come up on the sides. And these are the arms, and they peg in. There's a peg right here. And there's a peg hole right in there, and they peg together. Mine like to pop off. So as you can see, they don't really like to stay on. It's very, very tight, but the wings kind of keep it all together, so it's not that big a deal. So a hole and a peg. So we just fold that section up and push it in on both sides. Then we're going to lift the arms up. And you can go ahead and fold out the fists now. A lot of this doesn't matter what order you do, but this is the way I'm doing it. And so now on the tail, we come back to the tail, and we're gonna crack the tail up and pull it away. And it's on this very long um, hinged arm, and it's also con where it's connected to the body. There's a so you're gonna pull that off, and there's a separate little piece of the body that comes with it. And you're gonna fold it up on that hinge and put it flush against the the back of the the vehicle. So then we're gonna come up here. And we're gonna, you see there's a hinge here, and there's a slot, a groove cut out for the, for this pole, post, whatever, whatever you want to call this arm thing. So we're gonna fold it in on that, and it's slightly thicker <clears throat> than the opening right here. So what you want to do is just line it up, and just ever so gently push it past the, the end point, and then it'll just slide right on through. It's a little bit tough, but just... Don't force it and just do it nice and gently and it goes right in and holds nice and sturdy. Come up to the cockpit, fold that up and it accordions back on a double hinge. And you notice the two tabs here go into two holes in right in there. So you just kind of Peg that together. And that also recreates the back kibble, the backpack that the G1 figure had. So come into the front. And we're going to, uh, well, first we're going to pull the legs straight down, extend them out, flip up the little kneecaps, knee pads, whatever you really want to call them. Is that focused? Yeah, it's focused. Now you're gonna come, oh, one of the feet was wrong. Stupid me. So you're gonna come over here with the feet. You're gonna fold the feet around a hinge and a ball. So you pull it at the hinge and you flip it at the ball until it's basically lined up with the thrusters. So you got a lot of range of movement in that heel because of that, in the foot because of that, the ball heel and the hinge. Split the legs. I'm gonna lift you up a little bit. Sorry, don't have a lot of use with this tripod yet, so I'm learning. So then you fold down the shoulders at this hinge. And then these little wing bits, they form like the shroud part to hide the 
to go around the intakes. You can either put them up, point them down, point them straight out, whatever you want. I like to point them slightly up, just my personal opinion. Um, the head, I had it flipped around just so you don't uh, see his head in vehicle mode, but you just rotate it around thusly, and there's his face. And there he is pretty much in robot mode. Stay. Pull the feet forward a little bit. Now we just got to reattach the wings. So you take the wing, we're going to pop it back on. And you're going to fold it down, back along the leg, and then flat along the hinge. Again. This is how they would be normally. So fold it down, back, and then fold the wingtip in. And there you have him. Completely in robot mode. Sometimes the feet can get, because they're a little bit too poseable. So we gotta kind of bend them forward a little bit. Stay. Okay. Why won't you stay? Okay, cool. Now, put you in focus. I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Missile pod fuel tanks. Pretty sure they're fuel tanks, but since he uses them as weapons, we can use them as weapons. He can hold them just in his fist, like that. That looks kind of goofy if you ask me. So, if you look on the sides, he has holes, and you can post them either way. You can post, you can put them that way, flip them forward. I kind of like them flip forward. It's just me. You can do anything you want with them. So we're gonna flip those right now. And there he is, completely in robot mode. So when we got the Hercules figures, um, very early on, like the first figure was X Graver which was the arm. Um, a lot of them had QC problems, or, you know, not necessarily QC problems, but flaws in their design. <clears throat> this guy kind of is no exception. His one design flaw was in his hips. Um, they were, this one was extremely tight, like it would eh, 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 when you bent it. And this one was very loud. This is a, everybody has the same problem basically. This one is always very tight and this one seems to be always very loud. There is a fix for this. Um, I didn't get this on video, but I did do it. What you have to do is on the back where I showed you the screw holes. Um, before you put these covers on, unscrew those four screws. There's two screws over here, part of the, the arm transformation. Two screws in there, one, two, and then one in his butt, in the hip. So what you want to do is unscrew the four screws in his back, the two in his chest, and that will allow the chest to come apart. And once you got the chest apart, what you want to do, sorry, after you get the chest apart, you just pull it apart and then you can get in the hips and the crotch. Take that one screw off the crotch and then you'll have access to all the internals of the hip. And what you want to do you don't have to do this, mind you. You could just leave it alone and hope, you know, that, that it goes away, that it wears out, which it probably will, but I didn't want to take the risk. So what I did was I did all that, and then I put a little bit of grease right in the hip joint. And the grease I used, because nobody out there can ever give me an answer to this, because I looked before, before I did this, and I finally emailed a company, a hobby company, and I asked them what kind of grease I should use, and this is what they suggested. So. If anybody wants, I think it's ahobby.com, something like that is where I bought it from. But this is the lube that I used. I bought two, so this is the unopened one that I have extra, so in case I need it. So there's the model number. Okay. There's a white lithium grease. It says it right there. Kind of hard to see. And there's the part number. 5148. So this is the exact grease I use, so if you, you want to do this, that's how you do it. Just be careful. There's a lot of little parts in there. Um, especially there's two little like U-shaped parts that have the ratchet on it um, that I couldn't figure out how to put back in, but eventually I figured it out. So when you do that, 
you get that. Much smoother motion, and you get all the strength of the ratchets. You don't lose any structural strength, you don't lose anything. All you lose is the very loud and the very squeaky joints. So yeah, I highly suggest that if you have the capabilities to do so, if you have, you know, if you're handy, I would suggest that upgrade, that patch, I guess. So yeah, I just wanted to let you know all that before I did the articulation so you know that, that where that was coming from. So head is, oh, let's take a look at his face. Total G1 face, I really dig that. Really good light piping in the eyes. As you can see on the back, it's all giant light piping. Really cool. Look at that. Totally awesome. Totally great face. Um, head is on. This is very hard to do in this configuration I got going on, but I kind of work with it. Head is on a ball joint, so you got full range of motion. Um, it's also got that going on for the combiner, but we're not going to worry about that now. Shoulders go up and down on on a swivel, as well as 360 degrees on a swivel. Um, upper bicep uh, rotation, hinge uh, elbow 90 degrees, doesn't go back at all. Fists only go in and out as part of the transformation, they do not rotate. 360 degrees in the hips. Um, I keep knocking these stupid wings off. Hips, ratchet in and out, forward and back. Upper thigh rotates, full bend at the knee, 90 degrees, nothing forward. And like I said, the feet are on these crazy double hinge with the ball and the hinge. So you can get some really awesome poses out of this guy. Um, I tend to, as of right now, I leave him kind of lurching, like stepping forward. Ugh. I think he looks cool like that. Kind of spread his feet as long. Well. Well, when I sit here and pose him, I get all these right. So he's not lurching over. That's kind of how I like to display them right now, until we get all superior on. So yeah, like I said, um, he is an arm, and we're going to transform him into an arm very soon. But just quick, really, on the back, you can see the back kibble, which is very G1-ish or esque. Um, so I don't really mind it. it does have a lot of. The paint is really nice, the colors are great. Uh, we should be getting the next one, which is Eagle, fairly soon. But yeah, let's... What we're gonna do is take the missiles off first. So basically, you're going to kind of half transform him back into a... Oh, you know what? Let me size comparison real quick. Here he is with Grind Rod. As a size comparison. And also... Night Morpher. Um, Stormer. Thundercracker. So you can see he's basically Voyager sized. He's as tall as Thundercracker. And he's taller than Grand Rod by about a head and a half. Get them out of the way. Sorry. Okay. To transform it, so like I said, transform him into arm. What we're gonna do is get grind rod out of frame. Um, <clears throat> sorry. First thing I'm gonna do is take the feet, flip them around, and push them up. <clears throat> flip down the knees, knee spikes, and we're gonna take the hand. Here is Superion's hand. It is basically the same thing as Hercules' hand, except that it's got a peg hole now, and it's white and red. It's got full, it's got a fully ball jointed thumb. Each finger has a double articulation. 
So they all go forward and bend once at a knuckle. So it's really cool. I really dig it. And we have the addition of a 5mm pick hole. So you can plug things into it. So to take the fist. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the fist and inside here there's two holes and there's a groove cut out for this kind of hexagon shape. So you're going to plug it into either side and then clamp it all together. <clears throat> just push it till it's secure. I like to usually just take the wings off just for a minute and just make sure everything's tight. Okay, next what you're going to do is you can either turn the head around, you can leave it. I like to turn it around because you don't really want to see the face in arm mode. Lift up the shoulders, flip down the fists, lift up the shoulder, flip down the fists, pull it back down. Like you transform it back into robot mode, but you're not going to flip these parts down. So you're just kind of resting the arm on the sides of the body. Kind of squish everything together. Um, I like to put these just to cover the head a little bit. You want to kind of try to hide the face in arm mode as much as you can. So the official way to do it is to collapse the arms all the way. But when you do that, his arm is very stumpy and has very little motion. This part likes to pop out. Just plug that back in. Um, also, fold down the chest like I showed before. Flip up the head a little bit to get at the combiner port, which is the same one as Hercules. Get in there and uh, nice tough ratchets. Flip the head part back down. So what you can do now is I like to pull it out Not all the way, just about halfway. And that gives it a better shape, more of an arm shape. Um, so then the missile pods you can store, you can just uh, put them in these holes and they kind of just rest along the forearm that way. Um, it doesn't matter which way to, you can rotate it either way and have either either side be the inside of your forearm. It doesn't really matter. That way it looks cool. This way is also fine. And this stupid thing pops out again. Stay in. Plug you in. Stay. Um, just for now, I guess I'll leave him like that. So yeah, that's where he's gonna plug into Silverbolt, not Silverbolt, he's a SR-71 Blackbird now, but that's what the arm looks like. So, it's beefy, beefy arm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was going to talk while I transform him back into robot mode. So yeah, I totally dig this guy, mostly because I dig Superion, and when I was a kid I was always a jet guy. Uh, I always wanted to be a fighter pilot when I was a kid for some reason because I was always into jets. I was playing flight sim since I was like f f 10. So ever, you know, ever since I had a you know, any kind of flight sim, I was always screwing around with them. So jets have always been in my blood. Even though I don't do anything with flying now, it was my thing when I was a kid. So I always dug Superion and I always wanted Superion. And I never had him, uh, but I do have him now. And when this guy got announced, that's what it was. Stupid wing. So, always wanted a Superion. And I didn't have him until recently. And he's still in storage because I have no room for him. But when this guy got announced, I was ecstatic. Because I always wanted a really cool Superion. And now we're totally getting him. And it's totally awesome. And I can't wait to see him not in prototype form, but in actual finished production form. So yeah, the only downside with this guy really is the price. He was 90 some odd dollars, just like Hercules, just like every other third party 
figure of this size, especially ones that are that are combiners. So what it really boils down to is once you get one, you have to get them all. Because you you have to have Superion. You can't just say, oh, I, I only like Firefly. I'm just going to get Firefly. No, you want Superion. You want the, the whole kit and caboodle. So just know what you're getting into. Know that buying this guy means you're buying five more, four more of him. Um, with Silverbolt being a little bit more expensive because he has an extra figure and he's bigger. And he's going to be probably like that tall. So just know what you're getting into. If you like Superion, if you like combiners, this guy is awesome. Just make sure you do the grease fix. Because that really does make a huge difference in the hips. I didn't want to review this guy until I did that did that fix. So I was really worried about it because it's really loud and it's really nerve wracking when you actually have him in hand. Um so yeah, should you get him? If you can afford him and you want to do the Hercules thing all over again, I would totally get him. Um, I'm not really worried about any quality issues because with Hercules we saw that when there was problems they fixed them you know with the next figure release they gave us you know whatever part was broken they gave you a fix for it so I'm not really worried about it and we all know TFC now has a very good reputation so I'm not really worried about getting these guys as they come out so you will see, all, you will see the reviews of the, of the rest of them but yeah, uh, I might get a repro label set for him if they release him. Um, he is very well painted, so he doesn't really need it. Maybe just some Autobot logos and some uh, some line detail and stuff like that. But he is also he's also very clean. The only kibble is the backpack, which is um, um, accurate to G1. Couldn't think of the word accurate. But yeah, if you're into him, if you're into combiners. <coughs> especially third-party combiners, and you don't mind the price, get him. He is fantastic. I love him. And I can't wait to get the rest of them soon. So this has been the video review. TFC Toys Uranus Phantom.